Oh, the 70s. What a decade to be alive in. This was a time when cars, music, clothes, and everything was different. If you were alive back then, then you got to experience life as it really was. We were fortunate that we did most of our idiotic things long before the internet. There was never any fear of someone recording us and then seconds later uploading it to share with the world. Technology in the 70s was relatively simple. Many kids had a close and play record player along with some 45 records to play. Polaroid cameras were another cool item to have. You did not have to wait two weeks to see your photos. The photograph magically appeared after 60 seconds of anticipation. And remember the Panasonic AM-FM wrist radio? It made listening to music fashionable. If you wanted to speak to someone, you either picked up the rotary phone and gave them a call or you went over to their house. You certainly didn't have Facebook or Instagram to hide behind. If the person you wanted to speak with was away, then you wrote them a letter. Back then, it was very common to have a pen pal or two. A 1970 summer weekend might consist of a family drive to your local ice cream shop for a tasty treat. On the way, you would listen to the radio, or if you were really lucky, your dad had an 8-track player, which seemed to always have Elvis or Johnny Cash playing. No one ever argued over whose Spotify playlist would be heard. If it was a warm Sunday afternoon, then it was the perfect time for some family fun washing the car in the driveway. Cars were bigger back then, and they had a whole lot of chrome, so it really did involve the whole family. Minus mom, that is. Toys in the 70s had an element of danger, and that was okay. Parents didn't sue the manufacturer, but it did teach you how to be careful and think about what you were doing. Especially with the possibility of burns from the Easy Bake Oven, Shrinky Dinks, or a wood burning kit. Even lawn darts and clackers had the possibility of sending something sharp inside you. We had a lot of choices when it came to toys and board games. But most of the time, kids were playing outside. In fact, our parents wanted it that way. It was the only time when they could enjoy some peace and quiet or maybe get something done around the house. People didn't have cell phones or apps to track where their kids were, so it was okay if parents had no clue where their kids were. It was very common for kids to be gone all day and then come home when the street lights came on. Remember when the 10 o'clock news came on? They would give out a reminder to parents in case they forgot to check on their kids. It's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your kids are? When we played outside, we fearlessly climbed trees, jumped over fences, explored, and made secret hideouts in poorly constructed tree houses or out in the woods. It was all about getting out of the house and having fun. We never had playdates back in the 70s. We just went outside and played. Eventually, other kids from the neighborhood would join in on the fun. It could be anything from hide and seek, tag, hopscotch, jump rope, or playing catch. Of course, having a bike was very important as a kid. It meant a little more freedom and it could take you places further away. But what kid didn't love a little danger? We all enjoyed a good challenge from time to time and never backed down from it. How many trash cans or people could we jump over? I don't know, but let's find out. If you made it further than anyone else, it made quite an impression. If someone landed on the kid at the end, it made a good impression too. Just not the way that you expected. Someone was going to be a winner and someone was going to be a loser and that was okay. We would experience these ups and downs in our neighborhood and in sports. At some point, we all knew someone in a cast and parents were never judged for not protecting their kids. And again, no lawsuits if you got hurt on someone else's property either. Childproofing in those days really only meant moving the ashtray off of the coffee table. Everything else seemed fair game. If we were ever confused on how we felt, we just turned to the old trusty mood ring. Silly putty was how we shared our favorite comics or memes. 
We learned how to entertain ourselves even if we just had some sticks and we could make a game out of anything. Using our imagination was just part of the learning experience. When it was hot outside, there was nothing better than a refreshing garden hose. Of course, don't forget to let it run a while or the water was going to be too hot. But if we were really lucky, then we might have some Kool-Aid or Tang. If it was good enough for the astronauts, then it was certainly good enough for us. Sugar cereals such as Fruit Loops or Captain Crunch was the breakfast that we preferred. Well, unless you had some Pop-Tarts, I guess. You could grab that and head out the door to play with your friends. Cheese Whiz became the fun snack that you and your friends or siblings would see how much you could stuff into your mouth. Swanson TV dinners were an occasional treat so that your mom did not have to cook. It was extra special when the TV trays came out. That meant that something was coming on television and no one wanted to miss it. Nutrition over the years has changed a lot. We weren't trying to eat unhealthy, but we did the best with what we had. The crazy thing was that people seemed to be thinner and perhaps because they were outside and more active. We did not have kids with peanut allergies or strawberry allergies, so sandwiches made with these ingredients were very popular at school. No one ever seemed to be on gluten-free, dairy-free, GMO-free, fat-free, or sugar-free diets. Just pack whatever you wanted inside that metal lunchbox and call it good. Whatever was in there wasn't going to go bad in there for a few hours, and that was without ice packs like kids use today. Secondhand smoke in the 1970s was something that we all experienced whether someone smoked in your house or not. It was going to be everywhere else, and I do mean everywhere. As kids, we all had things that mimic adults and their addictions. We had bubble blowing pipes, bubble gum cigars, candy cigarettes, fun dip, and even pixie sticks. For us kids, it was really all about getting more sugar. And who didn't want the candy bracelets or necklace? That was great when you were playing outside with your friends. We did not worry about germs at all, and instead, we just offered them a bite from it. Many of the grammar lessons we learned came from the animated Schoolhouse Rocks. Conjunction Junction, what's your function? Encyclopedias were our Google for the time period. No one was looking up anything fast with those. We may not have had the internet, Facebook, or Netflix, but we did have the next best thing. The picture view masters could take us to far off places that we had never seen and might not ever go. Our tablets weren't high tech, but we did have hours of fun drawing endless images on the Etch-a-Sketch. After a hard day of playing outside, we would come in and relax a little in the tub with Mr. Bubbles. Television programming went off the air at night, and with no cell phones or computers, it was much easier to get a full night's sleep. It really is amazing to think about what all we did without helmets, seat belts, or cell phones. Heck, even our mothers were smoking and drinking while they were pregnant with us. Yet somehow, many of us survived. Generally speaking, the younger generation seemed to suffer from more anxiety than we or our parents did. Now there are more weight issues, body issues, and various other health issues than we had ever experienced in the 70s. Much of this new kind of shaming or needing to have some issues seems to come from television or the internet. We were less exposed to all of that in the 1970s. Did you ever hear of a kid being diagnosed with ADD or ADHD? Perhaps we all just need to be outside more and enjoy each other's company in person without all the distractions. So are our kids better off today than we were? All I know is I wouldn't trade my childhood for all the likes on Facebook. Some things are irreplaceable and the memories of the 70s will always be something I cherish. What do you remember most about the 1970s? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.